Welcome back and thanks for stopping. I'm Jeff and today I want to show you what to expect if you got a half of a pig or a whole pig rather than just going to the store and buying one package of pork chops or one pack one ham or maybe one package of bacon. Uh, recently we just had our pigs butchered and we ended up keeping one and a half pigs and with both of them we actually had them processed quite differently uh, and it works out great for making a video so I can explain to you what some of those differences are. I'm going to start with the half pig that we had done and with the half pig we didn't have any smoking done with this one. It, everything on it is fresh uh, which means that as the cut is made it's just put in a package just like that there's no uh, additional flavorings that are added to it. So this pig, uh, the dress weight, or the half of a pig, uh, the dress weight was 126 pounds and the trimmings uh, ended up being about 15 pounds. So before we get too far into this, uh, I'm going to use our piggy bank that we made out in uh, Door County with my my cousin and my sister-in-law. It was kind of a rainy day out there on a vacation and they took us to this cute little place and they had a spot where you could uh, pick out one of these and paint it and this is what we kind of went with and um, it's kind of cute. But biggest thing right now is uh, terminology. Where are some of these cuts uh, coming from that you might be getting? So everybody's heard of pork chops and typically the pork chops are going to be coming from the pork loin uh, which is up along the back here uh, and you can also get just regular pork loin. Uh, loin is just or pork chops are just cut up pork loins. The ham that's going to be in the butt region uh, or the the rear end so the back quarter here you got spare ribs that are going to be along the ribs uh, you've got rib tips there's picnic hams which is going to be uh, the shoulder, there's pork butt, uh, which that is also from the, the shoulders. Um, the bacon is going to be coming from the pork belly. And then if you choose to get like a pork hock, uh, the hocks are actually the knuckles of the, of the pig. So, um, and then there's also uh, what's called back fat. So uh, some pigs, especially if they're fed corn and soybeans and all of that stuff, they get a, an excessive amount of fat on there that needs to be scraped off. Um, and that actually uh, can be utilized with cooking and different things like that. But uh, the back fat that you might be getting, uh, or the lard, would be coming from uh, primarily the, the upper part here and then any other kind of trimming areas that uh, might be excessive. All right, now back to the meat, the cuts. Uh, so I've always wanted to try bacon, making my own. So what I had the, the butcher do was just keep my uh, pork belly, uh, which again was down by the side here, by the ribs, uh, separate, and he rolled it up for me. So now I'm able to try making some uh, bacon by myself. The next package here we've got is pork trimmings and actually we've got two pork trimmings here because uh, again we didn't have these processed into any things like uh, brats and summer sausage or um, different cuts like that. So that's where pork trimmings can be used um, and we've got all of them here for when we make our own. Then we've got some liver. I'm not sure what to do with liver. I know beef liver is probably one of the most healthy things you can possibly eat on earth. Um, but pork liver, I, I guess I don't know how to prepare that. I never have. So uh, we're going to give that a try as well. And then we've got lard. So this is the amount of lard that we end up getting off of our, the half of our pig, um, which doesn't seem to be a whole lot. Uh, but it'll actually work out good. And I've heard people that render lard, uh, they'll never go back to using like a, a vegetable oil and stuff like that for cooking. Um, gives a great flavor to the food. Um, and uh, depending on how your pig was raised, the lard from uh, pigs like ours is going to be uh, actually very healthy for you. And the leaf lard is kind of the prized possession of the, of the lard family. Um, 
what they use leaf lard for, they'll render, people will render it down and use it for like a pie crust and stuff like that. So it's a good ingredient for that. Um, it's the most pure lard. It doesn't have a whole lot of stuff. It's, it's usually right around like the kidneys and the liver and stuff like that of the, of the pig. I might as well leave that box there. So going back through, uh, again, everything was fresh, nothing was smoked. So for the hams, we've got fresh ham roast. We ended up with one, two, three, four, four fresh ham roasts. And I think they're about maybe two, three, two or three pounds uh, per one. Let's see if it says it on there. Nope. So I think it was right around that two to four pounds uh, per ham. Then we've got uh, pork bone in shoulder. So you've got the shoulder roast uh, that's got the bone in it. And I'm gonna show you at the end of this video what I'm doing with some of uh, the stuff we have left over from last year with the, the bone in shoulders. So we got one, two, that's a shoulder steak. Bone in shoulder, three, four, I think that's all of them. We've got, yep, so we've got four of the pork bone and shoulders, and that is gonna be, I think it's right around one to two pounds uh, per one. Then we've got pork shoulder steak. So we've got one, two, three shoulder steaks. We've got spare ribs. Uh, ribs are wonderful barbecued. Um, we've smoked a few of them in the past and they turn out great. Um, and then we've got pork neck bones and neck bones can be used to make like a, a bone broth, kind of like you would do with a, a bone, for, a big bone from a cow or uh, with the carcass of a chicken, you can make the bone broth and it's uh, extremely healthy for you when that marrow uh, extracts from the bone. So pork chops, those are the last things with, that I'm gonna show you for our fresh pig. Um, with these, we ended up with, uh, you can get your pork chops at a different thickness, and with this half of a pig, we ended up going with three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, sometimes they, they, the standard is about five eighths of an inch thick, which is only an eighth inch. Uh, we tend to like the pork chops just a little bit uh, on the thicker side. And you can also choose how many pork chops you want per package. If there's only two of you at home, uh, you might only want two per package. If there's uh, six of you at home, uh, maybe you wanna do uh, four per package and then you take out two packages, you have eight pork chops. Uh, typically, if you have a lot of kids at home, they're gonna be eating a lot of food. So uh, you can have a, a different amount of pork chops per package. Uh, you just specify that to the butcher and the thickness of the pork chops that you want. So we've got four here, uh, one package, two packages, three packages, four, five, six. So six packages of four plus the three, and that's, uh, that, would, that accounts for all of our pork chops. And now onto our whole pig. So with our whole pig, we ended up getting our dress weight was 154 pounds and our trim weight was 21 pounds. Uh, and if you notice, this was a small pig uh, versus the half of our other one. Or the half of our other one, the dress weight was 126 pounds. So this one was a little, quite a bit smaller, uh, but it worked out well for what we were looking for to get out of it. Um, and I'll show you exactly what the cuts were that we got out of it and some options that you can do uh, with the same thing. So we ended with pork chops on the last one. I'm gonna start with pork chops on this one. And this pig, we ended up getting uh, all of them cut into one inch thick chops and we went with four per package again. So ultimately we end up with less pork chops, uh, but it's the same amount weight wise, uh, so to speak. So. Uh, just remember, if you take one inch pork chops, you're gonna get less of them, but you have the same amount of meat. So if you have thinner ones, you're gonna have more pork chops. You've got the same amount of pork loin that you're working with. So uh, one inch, we've got one package, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine packages of four pot pork chops a piece and one with three. So that's our pork chops. And again, this is all fresh. Uh, this portion is all fresh. Uh, we'll get to the smoke portion here in a minute and we'll talk about the prices on uh, smoking your stuff versus just having it fresh. Uh, but pork chops, they come as fresh uh, and some of the other stuff like the pork shoulders, unless you get them smoked uh, separately or specifically ask for that, um, a lot of that'll come for fresh. So pork shoulder steaks, we ended up with one, two, three, four, five. Let's see if there's any hiding. Yep, so we just got the five, five packages of pork shoulder steaks. Remember, this was a smaller pig. Um, it ended up being the shoulder steaks are just a little bit smaller. And as a comparison, this was from the 126 pound half. This is from our 150 154 whole, uh, that's the difference in the, in the shoulder steak size. So uh, bigger pig, you get a little bit more meat uh, than a smaller one. It, it all depends on what you're looking for. Uh, if the farmer has enough pigs and you want to specify a larger pig uh, versus a smaller pig, or if you want smaller cuts of things that, versus a bigger one, uh, they can itemize the, the pigs, uh, which ones you get uh, at the locker. Then we've got more pork liver. I gotta figure out something to do with that stuff, find a good recipe. Uh, we've got pork neck bones, and again, there's one package per half, so we ended up with both packages with this whole pig. We've got pork spare ribs, uh, one from each side. So we've got the one package from their half, we've got the two packages on our whole. None of this stuff is smoked yet. Uh, we've got the pork bone in shoulder. We've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got six packages of the pork bone and shoulder. And remember, at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you something that I'm doing right now uh, with some of our pork shoulders from last year. All right, we'll get this out of the way. Okay, and then, We've got our leaf lard again. Uh, this is from the whole pig. We've got our lard, the pork lard. Uh, this guy, he was not overly fat, so we didn't get a, a pile of lard, but um, I think it'll work out great for, for the amount we will use it. The trimmings, we only have one bag of trimmings left uh, from this ha uh, whole pig, and I'll explain a little bit more on that in a minute. So I'm gonna set these off to the side. Smoked ham roast, we got one smoked ham. We've got two, three, four, five, and six packages of smoked ham roasts. And then we move to the smoked ham steaks, which are a portion of the ham. They're kind of the inner part where they make a, a steak out of it. And I've actually heard from people that they, they prefer the steaks over the actual, um, like a beef cut, beef steak, or uh, other cuts of the pig. So I'm kind of excited to try the ham steaks. I've never had them before. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and six smoked ham steaks. Okay, and then we've got some other smoked options here. We'll slide them over. I'll keep all the smoked stuff here so you can see it. So bacon, everyone's favorite, everyone loves bacon. Uh, we actually ended up having one package, so what I'm showing you uh, is short by one package of bacon. I think they're about one pound packages. Uh, if I, I haven't weighed them, but they look pretty, pretty close. So for our whole pig, we ended up with two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
13. So here we've got 13 packages of bacon. Again, we're minus one, so we ended up with 14 packages of, of bacon. And I'll tell you what, the place that we got them done, um, they did an excellent job. The, the package that we had, it was uh, the flavor was great. It wasn't too salty. It had a great smoky uh, flavor to it. Um, done wonderfully. Then we've got uh, the other option for uh, for your cuts. So remember, the trimmings for this pig, I've only got this much for a whole pig, and we've got about the same amount or more for the half of a pig, and here's the reason why. Trimmings can be used for, for many different things. Um, and what we had the, the butcher do was make us a bunch of brats. Uh, we had pineapple brats, and we also had smoked we had smoked cheddar worst brats that we had them make for us. Um, so I'll show you how many packages of each of these we had. There's six brats per package. Uh, we'll start with the pineapple. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yep, six packages of fresh pineapple brats. Smoked cheddar worst, we are minus one because we had one. And again, uh, the place that we had them done, they did a great job. Uh, the smoky flavor is about right spot on. So we, when we grilled them, uh, they tasted wonderful. So we'll go through how many we got of these. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, we ate one, so we ended up with, we had seven packages of smoked cheddar worst um, and six, six brats per package. So the pork trimmings, uh, they're extremely useful for a lot of different things, uh, especially if you want to make your own stuff. Uh, some of our trimmings, again, they went towards our, our brats. We ended up with nine pounds of pineapple brats, 10 pounds of smoked cheddar brats. Um, plus we also got the, the benefit of having additional trimmings and what I do with the additional trimmings is um, we just recently made some of our own pork sausage and that turned out really good. Um, I like to make uh, venison summer sausage and I think I've got a recipe that uh, it's been turning out good for the last three times uh, that we've made it so I'm kind of confident on that recipe. We also make uh, snack sticks so instead of snack or snack strips, I'm sorry. These are snack strips uh, where you make a loaf, you cut it into strips uh, with snack stick seasoning. Um, turns out really good. Um, and snack sticks, we also make them. So all of those things we can make uh, with pork trimmings. Uh, so they're, they're a very useful thing also, especially if you're a hunter and you have a lot of venison that you want to mix and uh, add some pork as a binder, um, helps retain a little bit of moisture, stuff like that. All right, so let's talk about pricing. Uh, with our half of a pig, uh, remember it was only, everything was fresh. There was nothing that was smoked. Uh, they cut it up, they packaged it, and that was all they had to do. So with that one, we just had the pork slaughter and the processing fee, which uh, where we took them, it was $1.25 per pound. And with our half of a pig, our dress weight was 126. The trimming weight was 15 pounds. Uh, so our price, the, what we had to pay the butcher for, um, for a fresh, pork uh, from a half of a pig ended up totaling $157.50. Um, and that's, you end up getting a lot of pork uh, with that amount. Um, with our whole pig, the whole pig, again, he was a little bit on the smaller side, uh, but it's the whole thing. Uh, the dress weight was 154 pounds. Trim weight was 21 pounds. Uh, curing, uh, we had some of that stuff done with the smoking. Uh, so with the slaughtering and processing of our whole pig, uh, the price was $1.20 a pound, which ended up being $184.80. The curing and smoking, which would be curing of the, of the hams uh, and the curing of the bacon and stuff like that, the smoking of those, that ends up being $1.65 a pound and we ended up with 45 pounds of smoked and cured product, which is $74.25. 
We also had custom pineapple brats made, custom cheddar worst made, uh, and the, the pineapple brats, we had 10 pounds of those, nope, I'm sorry, pineapple brats was nine pounds uh, at $2.59 a pound, which cost us $23.31 for um, all of our packages of pineapple brats. The custom cheddar worst, they, that was 10 pounds, and that is at a price of $3.89 a pound. When you add the cheese, cheese, that cheese adds quite a bit, or a little bit to the price. Um, so for those 10 pounds, it was $38.90. And then bagging the trim, they have that as a line item on here. We've got seven pounds, uh, but I think it's just telling us how much we've got because it's got $0 for the price. That's included, I'm assuming, with the slaughter and processing fee. So for our whole pig, with the bacon, the brats, the smoked hams, all of the other fresh products that we ended up getting, uh, it ended up costing $321.26. So uh, there's a lot of stuff here for that price. The other price factor is what you pay to, the, to your farmer. Um, every farm is gonna be different on how they grow their animals, what they feed their animals. Um, these guys, when we, the last week or the, actually the last three weeks that we had them, they were eating about 100 pounds of feed per day. Uh, and that at 41 cents or 42 cents for a specialty mix, um, it adds up in a hurry. So um, it's way different than if I was just to feed them uh, corn and soybeans and something uh, from there. Uh, it's a personal choice that I want, want for my pigs to be eating. Um, and you can ask your farmer, uh, what are you feeding your animals? If it doesn't matter to you, then so be it. That's, uh, that's a benefit to you, it's a benefit to that farmer. Um, but keeping money local is, I think that's a, it's a important part of community. So if you can find a farmer that is raising pigs and it, it's within your price range, um, you can get a lot of stuff here. Some of the drawbacks might be uh, freezer space. If you notice, there's a lot of, a lot of pork here. Uh, plus, we've also got chickens in there. We've also got some fish. We've also got some venison. Um, so a freezer can fill up pretty quickly, especially if it's a smaller chest freezer, depending on your living situation, all of that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of things to consider when looking at purchasing these. But I hope this helps kind of clear up what to expect as far as what you can get for a pig. Maybe what some of your options are, like uh, your pork chops, how thick you want them cut, uh, how many you want per package, stuff like that. Um, and for the pricing, uh, it's kind of, it's a large chunk of money up front, but I think in the long run, I, I'd have to say that you do save, save money uh, in the long run going this route. Plus, you have the added benefit of knowing exactly where your pig came from, the living conditions that your pig was raised in, uh, what it was being fed, all of that kind of stuff. So um, I hope this helps again, and I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Oop, I darn near forgot to show you what we've been doing with a, a pork shoulder or actually two pork shoulders that we had left over from last year. Uh, I've heard of, I didn't have any pork belly. I wanted to try making bacon and I heard if you use a pork shoulder, they call it a buckboard bacon. You use the same brining process and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but here is what I've got so far. Ooh, it smells really good. Looks pretty good. I'm told that the shoulder roast, if you make it into buckboard bacon, uh, it's a little bit less fatty. It's got a little bit more meat. Um, the curing process again uh, is the same. So I hope it uh, I hope it turns out half as good as it smells and uh, looks. So, all right, that's all I've got for you. Have a good day.